What up? Happy Friday! We're back! We're back! We're back! We're back! Oh yeah! Oh yeah! Being friends with someone because they have the potential to become the person who we want them to be. Um. Oh, that's such a tough one because I know I've certainly done that where I'm like, okay, and I've done it in relationships too, where I'm like, ooh, I can be with this person because I know they can become what I want them to be. I'm going to be honest. And I don't know if it's what you want to hear, but I got to, I got to give you my honest truth, my honest experience. It's never worked out for me because I feel like we should love the people in our lives for who they already are. And if it's something that is a barrier to you accepting them as they are now, then I feel it's not fair to them for you to have that expectation that they are going to change to your preference, right? Like, who am I to say what this person should be like in the future? Like, that's not for me to say. It's for that person to become the way they want to be in the future. Men who I thought, um, sorry, they weren't men. Sorry. <laughs> they were guys. They were boys camouflaging as guys. They weren't even guys. <laughs> um, but anyway, I digress. I, I was like, oh, if I just, you know, change the way they dress, which I felt like I had to do with everybody. If I just like, um, you know, told them when to like, it was appropriate to be this way and that way, especially with my family, because my family is very strict and they had like certain expectations of how people behave in like family settings. And if my boyfriends didn't have that cultural expectation or background or upbringing, hello, most people aren't Dominican, they wouldn't. But I knew that my mom would like, like them better or approve of them more if they behaved a certain way. So I would try to like, you know, frame up what they said and I just remember it being really stressful really exhausting and it never had the outcome I wanted so what I've since learned is that the people who are meant to be in your life are gonna be in your life and what they bring to the table. And if you are able to tolerate that, meaning that is acceptable to your own, you know, integrity and how you wanna show up and behave in the world, then those are the people you keep in your life. I think it's okay to have our ups and downs, good days and bad days, it's totally natural. Absolutely. The ebb and flow, right? What goes up must come down with, with gravity. What goes down must come up, right? So not to be feared for any of you who were here with us um, a couple weeks back, or was it last week? I don't know, <laughs> I can't keep track. I wasn't doing too good, but now I am. And it's okay to go through that process and have that awakening that learning that opening for yourself so that you can maneuver through situations however you deem fit for yourself and that you don't need to stay down here um that you can elevate to where the day the circumstances bring you y'all see the kitty cat technique uh i was on to something and so the kitty cat technique was born. So here we go. We're going to go through it so that you have this in your toolkit for when you y'all has um the you tried the kitty cat technique and how what have been your your thoughts about it? I was having fun with that video, so I hope you enjoyed it. I got some good response. Hopefully you'll share it, right? So that if anybody you know is kind of like, you know, maybe a little apprehensive or anxious you can help them out with a little fun humorous way to reduce anxiety it's been a tricky um year for me it really has y'all have experienced it <laughs> with me we still have a few months so what i say to that because i'm in a similarish boat perhaps and anybody else who is feeling perhaps the challenges this year. So I'm, I don't want to make it seem like one year it's going to be like no challenges. I don't think that's ever the case, right? Um, it's just this year is very prevalent for me because it was very public. 
So what I want to say about that is that, right? We're in the middle of August-ish. September, October, November, December. That's four months. We have four months, y'all. Four months. The tide can turn very quickly in our favor, right? So despite what we have been challenged with and, you know, working through and hopefully overcoming, perhaps what that means is that the remaining four, four months will have an opening for us. And these challenges are delivering us to the doorstep to put us in position to open the door to what is awaiting for us on the other side. So I, Giovanna, want to look at it that way because that gives me a more empowering stance on my life. I can show up with more power by believing and having faith that what is remaining for me to experience in the remaining four months of 2023 will be the big bow on 2023. Let's partake in that energy and that belief that what remains is going to be ultra incredible to surpass whatever challenges we've had this year. So that's what I'm going to sign up for. <laughs> if any of that feels good for you, you can do the same. And just know that these difficult moments are just building you up. You are stronger, braver, more courageous, um, more shiny <laughs> because of these hard times, right? The diamond gets really beautiful and shiny because it gets pressed. <laughs> my lesson is that i don't need to feel guilt or shame or embarrassment or feeling bad because i in the past and i always say in the past because it's not my present and i don't want it to be my future in the past i've always felt guilty and shame and, and embarrassment a lot of embarrassment and that is something I've been peeling away, right? Like I've been like an onion, peeling away the guilt, the shame, the embarrassment for many years. And it's not an easy thing. I don't know what happened in my youth. I really don't. I don't know what traumatic experience happened in my youth that has made me this way where I'm like always really embarrassed. Like I can't help it. I get really shy, really embarrassed, really like, oh snap, I didn't mean to, you know? So my lesson, that I want to share, perhaps for any of you who can relate, is that we don't need to feel guilty for an extra long stretch of time, right? Like that is something we're doing for ourselves. Look how quickly you all excused me and pardoned me and overlooked. But in my heart, I was still feeling like the shame and the guilt and I was embarrassed. But you all released it quicker than I did. And you gave me permission to be okay with it. But us ourselves as humans, I believe we're so much harder on ourselves. We're so much stricter on what, you know, we expect of ourselves oftentimes. And, you know, I don't like disappointing people, disappointing my younglings, especially. And yet y'all have granted me permission to let it go. So why don't we all understand that we are the ones that are so hard on ourselves when others have moved on, right? So how can we be quicker to move on when situations like this happen? And they're gonna happen. They're bound to happen, right? So that's what I want to focus on as perhaps the lesson for ourselves. It's that we need not shame ourselves any more than we already do. We can release things and let them go as easily as oftentimes other people are willing to do it for us. So in these quiet moments, um, moments of silence, right? So many of us can be uncomfortable because we're like, oh, I'm not talking, no one's talking. Shouldn't there be something going on? These moments are necessary as well. It's necessary to have the mind have a moment to catch up 
with the speed of life, right? Quiet times, as I'm reading perhaps, can be filled with your own breath, with your own space, right? So how I, I think of space, that little window, right? That little window of like going from one thing to another. It's a little tiny window. And sometimes when we can expand it, that's why meditation is so fantastic because we can expand those little windows. We can have a little bit more of an opening so that our thoughts aren't overbearing so that we can pause and have a, a moment to step into the next thought or, or step into the next moment. It doesn't always need to be one right after the other, right? There can be a little bit of space. And those are the moments I believe we should aspire to having more of on a minute to minute basis, right? That's what I'm talking about when I say space, that little, that little window, right? What pastime activities put me at ease? Mine is music. I'll say a great question. For me, it's yoga. It's meditation. It's being with you guys. Writing. I love to write. Dance. I love to dance. I do love to put my mind at ease through dance. It's true. That's what happens. Why do we go after the people who do not want to be friends with us and push away the people that do? So why do we call some people our best friend when they only see us as acquaintances? I'm, I love this question, Vyas. It's really deep in the sense that I'm wondering, like these places of curiosity, right? Of why it is that we go after the people who do not want us. I think it's human nature to want what we can't have. I think there's like a certain level of challenge. A lot of us humans um, enjoy partaking in, right? So we've often heard that like the the potential partner, girl or boy, whatever, um, who doesn't want you, there's like this chase, right? You chase them to see if you can get them, right? And I don't know like scientifically why our, our bodies are created that way and maybe I can do a little research but what I think it is it's curiosity if you can change their mind the wonderment of can we be what that other person wants us to be for them to like us it's really deep-rooted I think because you would think that it would be easier to just go for the people who um, are connected to you like that magnetic field where like you're like oh yeah we're bonded right because this is who we're supposed to bond with but i think there's a part of our chemistry that wants the challenge it's like what can i have that i can try to get and then when i get it i could be like celebrating that i got what didn't want me isn't that interesting because i do know what you mean i've had plenty of um situations where I wanted the guy who didn't want me and they'd want like my friend and I'm like but why you know um ultimately um you let it go right and you let the friend be happy with the guy or girl if that's who they want to be with but I just remember feeling oftentimes I never got the guy I know Y'all who know Oscar probably cannot imagine me feeling that way. But the truth is that um, in my teens and 20s, oftentimes I didn't get the guy that I wanted. That's true. That's really true. Um, oftentimes I got the, the guy who pursued me so much that finally I gave in. And they were great guys. They were great guys because I wouldn't have been with someone who wasn't. Okay, initially I was with someone who wasn't a great guy. And it's funny, we're starting to talk a little bit about relationships, which is one of the videos I have that I'm working on for us all um, about relationships. It's called um, Enjoying the Process of Finding the One. 
So I'm working on that video. So it's funny how we're talking about relationships because relationships aren't just guy, girl, girl, girl. You know what I mean? It's not just opposites attracting or, <laughs> you know what I mean? It's not just、um, an intimate relationship or whatever that means, depending what age you're at. It is also friendships, right? Relationships are relationships. You have relationships with your parents and your siblings, right? So,、um, so I think so often I struggled finding someone, and it was frustrating because I always felt like I had to settle, right? And not that they weren't great guys, they just weren't the guy I wanted firsthand. So they pursued me, so I ended up with them. And that is not something I recommend, right? In your teens and in your 20s, I think oftentimes you think, like, okay, this is all I'm gonna get, I might as well take it. No, not true.、Um, it's that impatience we have, right? Like, we think, like, let's, let me grab this person now because if nobody else comes along, I might be alone. Not true.、Um, because there are billions. Literally, of people on this earth, and you being with the wrong person precludes you from finding the right person. Try that on. So, oftentimes, when we rush something to just have someone, we lose the capacity to open ourselves up to what is really out there. So, that's why I'm such a huge fan of being single. That's why I love being single. I found my person, so I'm married now. But in the past, when I was single, I loved it because it gave me full realm, right? It gave me full、um, uh, ability, a capacity to, to meet different people, to engage with different personalities, to connect with different brains, hearts, right? And what that does is when you find, That person that's meant for you, and I think we can have more than one person. I'm not saying there's only one person in the galaxy for you, but when we find that one person that we want to be with、um, for the stretch of time, then we know it. And that was what's so cool. So, like, I knew Oscar was someone I wanted to be with for the long term, but I only knew that because I had been single and I was able to realize what I didn't want. So, I think that comes from a really powerful place because what I think is so important is that sometimes we go after the people who are our challenge, but they're not right for us. And sometimes the people who pursue us are easy <laughs> in the sense that, you know, they're attainable, but they're not who we're meant to be with. So, when we do those two things, those two things, we Prevent ourselves from finding out A, who we are, B, who we're meant to be with, and C, the person who fulfills those two things, meaning they're a great catch and we connect with them. But if you're in a relationship and assuming you're loyal to that person, you can't find that other person. So this is when we settle and we're with someone just because it's easy. And that's not how you want to go through life. Going through life because it's easy. Is not going to give you the life you want or the life we think we see that is all of the life we want to partake in because you've settled for easy. And that's why when you see relationships, and I'm going to use mine and Oscar's as an example, where we look so connected and we are so connected, you think that this happens like, no, it's not just like that. You gotta look for it. You gotta work for it. You gotta treasure it and nurture it. And that is when something like what we have becomes what it is. You can't be dismissive about it and be like, okay, whatever. No, every day, Oscar and I, and it's not work because we love it and we love each other, but every day you have to make sure that person realizes how much they mean to you. Make sure they realize how much they mean to you. Did I say that right? Yeah, I think so, right? So it's the little things, a little note, a little text, whatever. And we can go more into this because I know I'm way over here, but it's, it's really fun to be single. And I don't want anyone to ever feel that being single is kind of like difficult or less than, or you know, you're not with someone, so you must not be up to a certain something that you're wanted. 
so not true. So when we can reframe that and, and have acceptance of fun that being single brings, then you will find the right person for you. When you're not looking, it's when that person will step into your life. I guarantee you that. I was not looking for Oscar. I was not looking for Oscar. And then he showed up and I'm like, I'm not letting this dude go. Meaning I'm not going to pass up on a great opportunity to be with him because I'm not ready to be in a relationship. I want to make sure I value the person that he is because he's worth keeping in my life. Hmm. I think when we call some people our best friend, when they only see us as acquaintances, I think it's because it could be a similar thing where you're just so hungry to have someone close to you that you'll attach to someone quicker than what other people attach themselves to. So not going to go into like what other traumas people have, but perhaps they don't know what it's like to be close to someone. Perhaps they have so many friends that they don't need to have one best friend because they have several really great friends, right? So I can't give you like one blanket answer for that. But I think when some of us are, you know, yearning for someone, we're a lot quicker to attach to someone. And when we're accepting of where we are and who we are, then that yearn isn't as, you know, for lack of a better term, desperate, right? So there's a lot more lackadaisical, easy, um, cool um, energy that um, permits a relationship to evolve, being friendship or partner, to what it's meant to be. And not having an expectation of what that is also releases some of the tension that perhaps somebody else might feel that you are putting on them for making them what they are not ready to see themselves as. I hope that made sense because it did in my brain. Um, right? So, so thank you. I love you all tremendously, my beautiful younglings. Happy Friday, happy Saturday, happy weekend, yay. And I'm going to try real hard, real hard to get a video up for Monday, but I am filming on Monday again. So let me see how I can do it. I don't want to overpromise and under deliver. I'm going to try, but we'll see. I don't know about this Monday yet. I'm still getting used to the two a week schedule. It's not, it's no joke. So big love. And I just love you tremendously. So. Happy weekend, yay! Bye for now. See you soon. Thank you for all the hearts. I love you all. So if you liked this video, go check out the others. I got lots of videos on this channel, so keep watching.